Welcome again to the Sprint Center in downtown Kansas City for semifinal Friday as the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship continues. Devoted fans of the four remaining schools get set for what should be another thrilling night of basketball. Welcome everyone to the Sprint Center in Kansas City for the much anticipated semifinals of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship. Fans are still filing in to watch tonight's first game, a matchup most wanted very badly, Iowa State against Kansas for the third time this year. Here's how they arrived. Iowa State with their best comeback of the season. Rallied to beat Oklahoma. Kansas shot a tournament record 66% to reach the semifinals. And tonight, it's Kansas State against an Oklahoma State team that survived against Baylor. Our Big 12 headlines, Iowa State trying to break a long drought. It's been 13 years since they won back-to-back -back games here in the Big 12 championship. For Kansas, they own this event. And in the semifinals, well, that's familiar territory. Kansas State one and two all time in the Big 12 semis. And Oklahoma State, it's been a while since they've been this far. Hi, everybody. I'm Doug Bell alongside Brendan Manzer. Welcome to Studio 66. Here we go. This is going to be a lot of fun. The four best teams in the league are here in the Final Four. The four best fan bases are here in Kansas City. Mix it all up. And Brendan, what's going to happen? You have as good an atmosphere as you can have in conference championship tournament play. It's going to be a high-level college basketball here. And I think the fact, too, Doug, that the Big 12 Conference is the only league in the country that plays a true round robin. So you have the third matchup between these teams, the rubber match between K-State and Oklahoma State, and then the much-anticipated <laughs> third basketball game between the Cyclones and Jayhawks. Let's talk about that game that happens here just in a moment. They combined for 390 total points in the two previous games. Both games went into overtime. Time. Are you expecting the same kind of offensive firework display tonight? I expect a very close basketball game, but I think it'll be much lower scoring. Defense will be a premium this evening. Cyclones got to worry about Ben McLemore, the way that he has played, and all the other ways that the Jayhawks can beat you. And then the Jayhawks, Jayhawks have to be concerned with Iowa State, their balanced scoring, the spacing, and their ability to shoot that long-range shot. And remember, Elijah Johnson had 39 in the last game. Brett Musburger, Fred Fraschilla, Holly Rowe on the call next. Tonight's Big 12 Network game is brought to you by Phillips 66. Experts in gas since 1927. By Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. By Motel 6, the official economy lodging partner of Big 12 fans everywhere. By Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh, 24 hours a day. And by Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Iowa State led by as many as six. McLemore has tied it! 97-89, Kansas will win it. Tyrus McGee, his ability to knock down threes from behind the arc. This is either a block or a charge. Elijah Johnson, his greatest game is a Jayhawk. And now we are ready for round three here in Kansas City. And what a scene we have got here tonight inside the Sprint Center. Standing room only. Ticket scalpers all over downtown. The number one seed in the tournament, the Kansas Jayhawks, taking on Iowa State. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our semifinals with Fran Fraschilla and Brett Musburger. Well, Fran, I don't think anybody who follows Big 12 basketball has more eagerly anticipated a semifinal than this one between Iowa State and Kansas. You know, Brent, the Iowa State players have been pining for a chance at a third chance at redemption. The Kansas players, very prideful, have said, bring it on. It's now, fun. 
As we take a look at our Phillips 66 one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to focus on the big man, Jeff with it. Well, he's going to be the focal point of both teams tonight because you remember in both games, Iowa State did a terrific job of using their big men to bring Jeff Withey and that shot blocking ability away from the basket. Watch George Niang, the freshman, get Withey away from the rim and then drive to the basket. Now, Bill Self has done this before, so he's going to take advantage of that size of Jeff Withey and try to pound the ball inside to him. As we take a look at the Iowa State lineup tonight, let me focus on somebody. Melvin Edgem, the junior over there on the right-hand side, one of the most underrated players in the country. Now, for Kansas, the story tonight is Elijah Johnson. Remember, he went for 39 in Ames, Iowa. But Holly Rowe, a bit of a controversy as that game ended. Well, fans were upset that Elijah Johnson ran out the clock by dunking the ball. Now, Elijah quickly apologized, realized he was being a poor sport. Some racial violent threats via Twitter. The university acted quickly. Iowa State investigated the matter, and the student body sent an apology letter to Elijah. He said he's sorry, but make no mistake, emotions are running high in this matchup tonight. Yeah, indeed. The two games both went to overtime. Victories by Kansas and both. Lucius with a quick steal on a turnover brings it down. So this is the first set for Iowa State. Corey Lucius coming off that game yesterday, Brent. He did not score, but he still was valuable in terms of his assists. Over the top, lob, and there is number three, Melvin Edgem from Toronto, Ontario, the leading rebounder, and that was a great feed, another assist by Lucius. Withy looking for receiver. Back out to Elijah, and he misses his first long ball here. Keep your focus on number five, Jeff Withy, and see how much he has to play away from the basket. Did not have a block shot in Ames in game two because he was away from the basket. And traveling is called against Niang, the freshman. Our officials tonight, a veteran crew, John Higgins heads it. Mike Stewart, Terry Ogles will be working with him. On this end, Brent, Iowa State will play off Kevin Young. They'll dare Elijah Johnson to shoot the ball because they want to pack it inside. Kansas looking to get McLemore off to another quick start. With the misses on his hook, they've missed a three-point attempt and now a hook shot by their center. And Lucius rolling through. Couldn't finish it. And Elijah Johnson with a bounce pass and there's Relaford sliding in. Beautiful feed by Johnson. This is Babb, fine defensive player handling the ball, and it's waved off. Offensive foul is called away from the ball that time. So there is Fred Hoiberg, who has done a marvelous job since returning to his hometown as head coach of the Cyclones. Played 10 years in the NBA. Dropped and out of bounds. McLemore has turned it over. A couple of early turnovers here for the Jayhawks in this game. Well, we talked about this yesterday. McLemore getting more comfortable running off screens. They've got to find more ways to get him open and get him shots. Shots. Good defender is out on Lucius. Edge of steps out. Misses his long ball attempt. Great hustle by Edge of and rolls in a remarkable shot from the right baseline. A hustling offensive rebound. Great point, Brent. Long shots mean long rebounds. Size not as big a factor. Relaford goes to back end with the flushes. You're watching a couple of teams. Both headed to the NCAA tournament, no question about that, and both could make deep runs. These are very talented basketball teams. Niang on the drive. Well, that's that spread offense we talked about. Niang taking advantage of Withy, 20 feet away from the rim. 
Elijah covered up by Lucius. Rutherford gets a screen by Young, goes back Elijah Johnson. He's 0 for 2 outside, tap back by Young. Rutherford's got it, he'll step to the 3, and he misses. Bab off transition, and there's the ultimate weapon for the Cyclones, the 3 ball. Hit the same shot yesterday to put the dagger in the heart of the Sooner. Same spot. Young backs in. Misfires, knocked away from McLemore, but Rutherford cleans up, and then he expected Elijah to cut back to the outside, and they've turned it over again. Fran, let's take a look at the principal financial group edge for the game. Well, obviously neutralized Withy at the rim. They're taking him away from the basket. For Kansas, the advantage inside went Withy offensively, and they must get Ben McLemore involved in this game offensively. Here's Clyburn, who was awesome against Oklahoma, and it rattles in. With the outside. Offensive rebound. Relaford over the top to Jeff again. And Iowa State takes it away. Sloppy play early for the Jayhawks. And a foul on McLemore as he jumped out on Babb that time. 9-4, Iowa State. And we're going to be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. It's time to go 66. Presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Iowa State jumps out ahead of Kansas here in a Big 12 semifinal game. The Jayhawks shooting only two of eight. They have turned the ball over, Fran, four times, and they have not started McLemore early in this game yet. No, they have not. Iowa State, on the other hand, remember, they've made 31 threes in the last two games. Clyburn waved off. Traveling is the call. Hoiberg is lethal designing plays during timeouts as he was that time, but traveling was the call on Clyburn. Hoiberg, yeah. incidentally, is off the bench. He's checked into the game. I thought he sn snuck that extra step in, but that play was well designed. And Freddie Hoiberg, the NBA experience. Elijah floats one short. Now it's two of nine to start this game for the Jayhawks. His edge on the dribble and uh, whistle. There was a foul call as he put it down on the deck. And that is going to bring our first Jayhawk substitute into the game. And that's going to be the freshman, Perry Ellis. Take a look at what they did. Did he get banged here on the, uh, on the elbow? He was wincing, Brent. Perry Ellis played very well in Ames. Gave Bill Self a big lift off the bench. Freshman has really played well down the stretch. Lucius. This is an into McLemore's hands. McLemore is cut off from Penetrate. Relifers left alone. Misses on the three ball. So the Jayhawks have not found the shooting touch here in the early going. Lucius off a good ball fake. Kick on back now, and here's Edgem inside, outside. The most underrated player in the Big 12. Seven points to start off. They lead the number one seed in the Big 12, 12-4. 12 when you drive the ball like Iowa State can, it collapses the defense. It's going to open up those three. Take a look now. Corey Lucius, a guy that's played in 11 games in the NCAA tournament when he was at Michigan State. The drive, the draw, and then the kick out for Edgem. And that's the advantage the Cyclones have. Big guys who are mobile away from the basket.
Kansas has missed its last six shots here, Fran, and the Cyclones are on an 8-0 run. Kansas has been a team of streaks this year after losing to Michigan State, 17 in a row. Didn't lose for two and a half months, then a three-game losing streak, got it back. Lost last Saturday at Baylor. Bill Self has to be a little bit concerned right now, and on the double team, Lucius was dropping down uh, with it, and the foul is going to be called. In behind him that time was Anthony Booker, and I believe he picked up the person. Brent, the reason Kansas has taken five threes already is because Fred Hoiberg is packing that defense in, and he's baiting them to shoot it. And that's where he wants Withy, is outside that three-point line. Withy with a high pick. Macklemore rattled out. Got it back. Johnson misses two. Young back again, controlling the offensive glass, led to that Jayhawk field goal. That's what Kevin Young's done all year long. He's been the garbage man for this team. You don't run any plays for him. You let him loose on the glass. Lucius on a pull-up. Young now with a defensive rebound. Active at both ends. Pick and roll, kicks it back to the far side, and a foul is going to be called against Iowa State on the entry to Young that time. Well, I like what Relaford did because Booker is playing off of Young and shading with the Young is posting with two feet in the lane, so throwing it to him there is not a bad strategy. Booker will sit, and Niang checks back in after that foul. McLemore lost control, and that's another turnover. They scouted that play out because McGee got to that spot before McLemore did. You know, Brent, we mentioned Fred Hoiberg's NBA experience. When you think of 10 years with great coaches, 200 possessions in a typical NBA game, 100 games a year. He's seen a lot of basketball. Now, McLemore's going to take a seat. He's turned it over three times here and has not scored, so he will sit. And they will go to the two-point guard attack. Nadir Tharp from Rooster Mass checks in for the Jayhawks, and McLemore will sit for a time. Hollow on the floor for Iowa State. And so is McGee, the best six man in the league. Oh, a beautiful underhanded scoop, but it didn't stay down. Well, he's more than just a shooter, Brent. We've really seen him attack that basket in two days. Over the top, there's Young. Oh, nice and piece. And follows, and he is fouled. And that fouls on Clyburn. We've seen this throughout the year. When you play off Kevin Young and shade Withy with the second post defender, even though Young's not a scorer, it's going to allow him to do this inside. Get loose and then dish inside to Withy. I never liked playing off a non-scorer for that reason. And also we saw yesterday when he dove to the rim, Withy found him. Tap back again by Young. Johnson can't find his shooting touch. And then he has a foul committed. A little Boo Boo Powell was a great story. Brent playing at Ames High School. He had two pretty good high school teammates, Harrison Barnes and Doug McDermott, now one of the leading scorers in the country. How about that high school team? They must have been a tough yeah. team to have. <laughs> you guys are trying to defend them. Wow. Right in high school. <laughs> Here's McGee coming around now, and he was losing control as he turned the corner. Ball out of bounds. It'll go back to Kansas. And I guess some folks say that was the, the best team maybe in the, in the history of, of Hard basketball to imagine. in yeah. Iowa. Huh? Hard to imagine a better team with an NBA first-round pick, a likely NBA player. And Paolo has done a nice job as a role player off the bench for Fred Hoiberg. 
Clark brings it up on him, and here is Young, who's been very active. Puts it down. Rutherford safely back. Muscle for a field goal. Young, he is leading the Jayhawks right now, and they pulls it within three. It is his activity at both ends. Niang on a move, and again it's Young. Into Rutherford, there's numbers here. Goes in for the layup, and the Jayhawks are back to within one. If you're Fred Hoiberg, you may have to change your defensive strategy on how you're playing Young. The Cyclones rushed into that set, turned it over. And the fan base from nearby Lawrence, Kansas, on its feet here as the Jayhawks rally. How about Travis Relliford? Young with the outlet. He's been the energizer. But Relliford, the fifth-year senior with the finish. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship is part of Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Kansas rallying here by Kevin Young. And it's all energy plays, Brent. He does a terrific job on the offensive glass, just keeping plays alive. There's the basket. Again, a guy you don't run any plays for. Great outlet off the rebound. That led to this layup by Relaford. And Holly Rowe, what did Coach Hoiberg have to say during that timeout to his team? Well, first thing he said was, guys, we've got to settle down. We're trying too hard right now. We're fine. Our two big areas of concern, our transition defense, we've given up some points there, but rebounding, they're getting killed on the glass. Down five in the rebounding column, but guys, six to one offensive boards. That was their point of emphasis. Little zone now, 2-3, change the tempo of this game. McLemore on the move, and that's his first field goal of the game. Good read by McLemore. Edgem came running out, and he was able to get that baseline drive. Young sealed up Edgem. McLemore picked off, but gets back defensively, and a foul is called, and Babb is coming to the free throw line. Watch this now. Watch that defense rotate to Macklemore, but Edgem closes out. That creates a drive and a nice seal by Perry Ellis as he's flashing across the lane. Now that's two fouls on Kevin Young. Young has been the ringleader, and he's limping just a touch after that little collision, and Withy will replace him, and Young will sit down. Go back there to the training staff. I want to see how he landed on this play, Frank, because there were three bodies back there by the baseline as Babb tried to turn the corner. McLemore was chasing. There you can see Young, and looks like Babb got into that right ankle. Yeah, so, yep. He's jogging now back on the bench. But those two fouls hurt because he has really given the Jayhawks a boost of energy. Now the question is, be Perry Ellis a little bit better offensively than Young, so Edgem's going to have to play him honestly. Ellis handling the ball right now. Very talented freshman. Yep. Got around and foul. No basket. Basket is waved off. I'll tell you something about Ellis, Brent. We found this out as the season went on. Bill Self loves to use the word soft with his players, and he heard that, Ellis, quite a bit. He's been anything but soft the last month of this season. There's one thing. Edgem picked up that foul. He fouled out of that game in Ames, and there are many observers who feel that Iowa State would have won game two if Edgem had not fouled out. He's their best offensive rebounder for sure. And he's a good weapon. But now he picked up that last foul, yep. so we'll keep an eye on that story. Well, it was Ellis that got him in foul trouble in Ames. Withy backed in and missed on the shot. Deadlocked at 13. Lucius off the dribble, kick corner, edge him. Misfiring, long rebound scooped up by the Jayhawks. That's his third.
Clark will gun the three, and it rattled out. I think Clark needed to be a little more patient. They have an advantage inside right now. Lucius off the dribble, gets inside on Ellis, turns it over. Here's Stark coming inside. Edger didn't want to foul him, kicked, but beautiful shot. Ben McLemore. Five quick points. Great IQ by Thorpe and McLemore because once McLemore gave it up, he sprinted to the three-point line. Now take a look at the reaction after this shot. Watch this. And that's a technical foul. McLemore has been assessed with a technical. The Jayhawk coaching staff upset. Bill Self's going to have to be restrained by his assistants. Well, remember this, Brent. In Ames, Bill Self got a technical early in that game. And he said later it was to charge up his team. So Bab will shoot. A showboating technical called on Ben McLemore. And the two free throws pull the cyclone to within one. Now, watch. This is the shot. Here's the act. Now watch the coach's reaction. He's getting an explanation over there. You know, I, I don't agree with the technical. Now, he did turn to the bench quickly, McLemore, and then continue down the floor. There's got to be some room for a little bit of emotion. I don't think he went over the top on that. Niang. Ellis rebounds. Here's Tharp on the move. Trailer has reported in for the Jayhawks. He screens for Tharp. Ellis, this is a two. A three point Jayhawk lead. He's changing the strategy now for. Fred Hoiberg because you must play Perry Ellis. And Self is still barking at the officials. Niang drives through with the left hand. Keep this in mind, Brent, that technical meant that was the second personal foul on McLemore. Eight and a half to go in the first half. And so as a result, McLemore is watching again. Trailer. And Clyburn will bring it back down for the Cyclones. One more bark. Kansas coming back again. Ellis outside, two for two. 2017, so as McLemore watches, Ellis picks up the scoring slack. Well, Young's got two. Ellis has come in and really given them a lift. Niang battles in again, this time right-handed. Self wanted an offensive foul. Did he just get teed? Yep. Yes. Now Self has been teed up. He has not settled down since a technical call. McLemore and now because he wanted an offensive call he thought Niang hooked with the arm as he spun free we have a on the floor. so we've got a timeout on the floor and we'll sort it all out when we come back one point game here in the Big 12 semifinal we're going to take you back as we keep an eye on Bill Self he was unhappy about the earlier technical foul call on his star McLemore. Now watch the coach on this last possession. And watch and see if Niang hooks him as he comes in toward the basket. Yeah, no, there's no question. Bill Self's been barking at these guys since that McLemore technical. It may be somewhat staged, but I also think that he has uh, not gotten over 
having to sit McLemore with the two fouls. McLemore still over there on self's bench. Now the Cyclones at the free throw line with McGee and he can give them the lead. He ties it at 20. So they are three for three shooting technicals and here's the fourth one. Four points off those two technical fouls and that boosts Iowa State back to a one point lead. Well, it's white ball Brent because it's the technical at the point of interruption so Kansas had the ball after the Niang basket. 2-3 zone again by Iowa State. And still the conversation <laughs> continues. <laughs> Freddie Hoiberg sitting on another bench. He's not saying a word. <laughs> Elijah feeds with him. Dark. Inside to Ellis and Ellis with his third field goal since McLemore was benched. Good job by Tharp at the top of that zone. Penetration sucked that defense to the ball. Now Holly Rowe, you were over there. What was uh, what was the Kansas bench chatter about? Well, you know, Coach Self had gotten so upset, the assistant coaches were restraining him, and they were trying to speak with the officials. But then they started getting heated with Mike Stewart. Mike Stewart said, look, enough. One more thing, and it's going to be another technical. So the officials trying to calm the Kansas coaching staff right now. Bill Self's still working it over there. And meanwhile, Withy picked up a foul, and this will send Edgem to the line. Remember, after the second game, that overtime loss in Ames when there was not a block or a charge call at the end of regulation. The Big 12 Conference apologized basically to Coach Hoiberg and the Iowa State team for a call not being made in that end. I'm not sure that Self accepted that either at the time. Well, you know, it, it, it's been reported by sources close to me that he said to his team, hey, they beat us twice, but we got the two wins. So those last two games have been on everybody's mind. So that sets our scene for the first semifinal here tonight. Kansas State and Oklahoma State will meet in the second one, the Phillips 66 championship in Kansas City. And with these started to come out a little harder on those ball screens. Lucius pulls up, air balls it for Johnson. Johnson drives through for his first field goal of the game. And Hoiberg wants a timeout. Jayhawks up by three. Brent, with all the distractions of the two technical fouls, it's important for the Iowa State players to keep their composure. They know what's going on at the other end of the floor, but they need to keep playing their game. That's why Fred Hoiberg took that time out. What does the name might suggest? Phillips 66 is the proud sponsor of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Championship. Both start with Phillips 66 and both stand for performance. Phillips 66, experts in gas since 1927. Chris Babb, Corey Lucius, two fifth-year guys. Corey Lucius. Lucius is struggling offensively. He is, he is 0 for 4 in this game. Scoreless against Oklahoma. Coach had to give him a long, long time on the bench in the second half. So Lucius hopes to get his game on track. And here is McGee. Catch and shoot it. Set play. Drains a three, and it's tied at 24. That's a great set play. They run often. Once again, Fred Hoiberg getting the job done out of timeouts. Lucius on the turnover. And he lost control. Turned it over. Lucius. Coach Hoiberg's got to keep his head in the game yeah. now. He's starting to get his dauber down, and Hoiberg's yelling at him. Well, I think those technicals have been a distraction for both teams, more so for Iowa State. 
but they'll still take the four. Yeah, points. they will. On the entry pass, Niang was in all with it. So that's a foul on Niang. He gives up a lot of height against Withy in this matchup, but he'll go off now. A couple of personal fouls against Niang. You know what, what, what Bill Self understands, Brent, is that the officials are going to call it close from here on out. So it's the Kansas's advantage to pound it inside where there's a lot of contact. Booker with two fouls back on the floor. Cyclones with that zone, and Johnson misfires again into Babs' hand. Boy, I'll tell you, I would have thrown that ball right into Jeff Withy. The officials are going to call any contact inside. Babb fades it away. Nice field goal by the veteran out of Arlington, Texas. Another one of those Big Ten transfers. He came from Penn State. I like this. Back to Tharp as he went down to the ground. Relifer shoots the three. The Jayhawks having a lot of trouble shooting the three-point hoop. They're about one of 11 in this game now. Babb gives it off inside. And a foul is going to be called. That might be two, Brent. Gibson and Withy has picked up his second. So Percy Gibson will come to the free throw line. Gibson, big fellow, 6'9, 265 pounds, built like a tight end. Well, Kansas City's inaugural Big 12 5K fun run and family stroll is happening in conjunction with the Phillips Sixers Big 12 Basketball Championship tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., downtown Kansas City. Open to participants of all ages, and Phillips 66 will be providing $1,000 in free gas to the overall men's and women's winners. So, friend, you're going to go out and participate in that, my friend? I don't know, friend. I think I could handle that. But I think you could, too. I think that uh, i got to save my energy for tomorrow night. Fire up on the pull-up for the Jayhawks. Sit down, and we're deadlocked again. Four minutes left here in a spirited first half. Iowa State doing a good job with the step pull. Look at that long one. Catch and shoot this time. Miss McGee. McLemore back on the floor. Remember, he's got a couple of fouls because of the technical. Relaford just cannot get the long ball. The foul battle for the loose. Stark has got Ellis. Ellis has been the main cog offensively. That is his fourth field goal. Good hustle by Thorpe to keep that rebound alive. Edgem comes back on him. Tries to keep it alive as he reaches over. Great spirit here in Kansas City, and we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. Welcome back to Kansas City. Another close one. Kansas leads Iowa State 28-26. And coming up in the Studio 66 halftime report, we'll preview our late game tonight. It is going to be a classic just like this one, I believe. The Wendy's Wooden Watch continues, uh, includes three Big 12 players. And Brendan Manzer, it seems to me that Kansas is settling for quick shots, especially that three-point shot, which is always there, but maybe they're not being patient enough. Yeah, they're one of 13 from three right now. And in an emotional ball game, your decision-making suffers. And so, Fran, my question to you is, when you were coaching, how do you relay that to your basketball team? Quit selling for the three and pound it inside. It's a great question, Brendan. What I used to do, Brent, depending on how good a shooting team I had, if we missed three jump shots in a row, everybody on our team knew the next time down that ball had to go inside. So you don't want to take away their freedom to shoot it, but they also have to understand the game must be played from the paint out. Now, along with the three points, shooting in this game the big story the personal fouls there are three players on both teams with two fouls apiece there are the three Jayhawks McLemore Withy and Young and over on the other side Edgem has now picked up two to go along with Niang and Booker 
So a lot of whistles here in the first half. And the players have to be aware now that everything is being called by this crew of Higgins, Stewart, and Oglesby. And let's see if they can adjust. And the one guy that has to adjust is McLemore. McGee misfires on the three. Ball out of bounds. It'll go over to the Jayhawks. Now we've talked about Kansas not being successful one of 13. But Iowa State is now only three of 13. How about this? In the first two games, they made 31 threes and shot over 50%. But that's Kansas's defense tonight as well. Jayhawks are up by four. Trailer. One and done, and here comes McGee on the deck. Well, they tried to drive Gibson, but Trailer couldn't finish. Ryburn turned it over. He traveled. That's turnover number eight for Hoiberg Cyclones. Iowa State has really not made Kansas pay for stretching that defense out to the three-point line, Brent. So they're guarding the line, but they're also not taking advantage of drives. Both teams are having just a little bit of difficulty at the point. Lucius is out. Tharp is now operating with Johnson in the backcourt for the Jayhawks. And Ellis has it rejected. Clyburn was on him. I would have posted again if I were Ellis. Post again. Tharp comes through. Yes. Swooping underhand shot. Well, if, any, if history is any guide, Tharp will develop into a very good Jayhawk. And it may come in the next month or so. Clyburn, one and done. Elijah snatches it away. Jayhawks looking to build on this. Ellis has been the ringleader since McLemore got into foul trouble. Relaford into Clyburn's hands. Not letting Kleiber penetrate as he did against Oklahoma. Swooping through is McGee. You said it. He's not just a long-range gunner. Well, he recognized the mismatch. Ellis bigger, a little slower. Tyrus McGee, one of the best six men in the country. Kansas leads it by four. See, I post Ellis here. Ellis comes to the basket. Not this time. Battle for the rebound. Trailer is in. It's a hill ball, and it will go over to Iowa State. Take a look, Brent. Now watch how spread out those burgundy jerseys are. Here comes Ellis. They've got nobody in the paint to challenge the shot, and McGee gets to the rim. So now Ellis will take a seat, and Justin Wesley, the junior from Fort Worth, will get some playing time. Well, I think if Kansas has the lead at the half, it's going to be a moral victory because McLemore, Young, Withy have played not a lot of chunks of this game. Jayhawks defense has been good. Clyburn is hammered as he comes in that time. Way to be their ball out of bounds. Jayhawks knocked it away from him cleanly. Juggled by McGee and Clyburn saves it inside of a minute now. Down by four. Clyburn with Wesley. Long three, yes. Wow, <laughs> one point game. And they went two for one there, so they get another possession. Dab knocks it away from Elijah. Loose ball. Johnson picks it back up. Shot clock is off. That is a good defender, all Big 12 defense for a good reason. Last shot time now for the Jayhawks. Johnson wants to go to work on him, and Relaford placed the long ball. A three. At the buzzer. Hollow misses the long shot, but Relaford gives the Jayhawks and its crowd a big lift here.
35-31. Let's go to Holly Rowe now with Coach Self. Well, Coach, what did the officials explain to you about that technical foul on Ben? They said he turned around and looked at the bench. So, uh, strange call. Uh, Coach, I know that that took you out of rhythm. How was it hard to juggle that offense with so many kids on the bench in foul trouble? I thought our, I thought our bench did a great job. That's been one thing. Most of the year, we've, we've uh, been inconsistent, and I thought Mari and Perry and the Deer all played great. Thank you, Coach. Thirty-five, thirty-one, with the Jayhawks holding a lead by four. Two technical fouls. A little bit of everything here in the first half. Welcome back, Studio Sixty-Six Halftime. Welcome back to the Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship Semifinal. The Kansas Jayhawks and Iowa State Cyclones with the Jayhawks leading by four points here at the intermission as we check in on our Papa John's first half stats. The Jayhawks shooting 42% and led by Perry Ellis, who was four of five. Neither team was shooting particularly well from three-point range. But the Cyclones got to the free throw line 10 times to the Jayhawks four. Welcome back, everybody. To Holly Rowe, Fran Fischel, I'm Brad Musparger. So what can we expect here in the second half, my friend? I think both teams weathered the storm quite well. Now they'll settle down. Everybody's got foul trouble. Three guys have two each from both teams. Kansas has to go inside. 62% inside the arc. They can't rely on the three. On the other hand, Iowa State can use the three ball to set up their drives. They've got to make some more threes. You know, Kevin Young really kept the Jayhawks in the game early. Well, he did, and interestingly, Brent, between Young and Ellis, they played all 20 minutes at the power forward spot and got Bill Self 12 points and nine rebounds. Young early with his hustle and energy around the basket. Good outlet here to Travis Relliford to key the break. And then Perry Ellis, the freshman from Wichita, who we see continuing to improve. Another big lift off the bench for Bill Self. Let's check in with Holly Rowe on the second half here. Well, I was able to catch up with Cyclones coach Fred Hoiberg. He said they're taking too many quick shots. They love to shoot the three, but he said we've at least got to get the ball to the second side of the floor. Pass better, move better ball movement, but that will move the defenders. He said, oh, oh, excuse me, Kansas is killing us on the offensive glass. If we get the ball side to side, move the defenders, we'll have a better shot on some of our misses. Johnson opens up with his first three ball of this game. He is now two of eight from the field. Good rhythm. They ran that offense all the way down. Very Lucius would like to get back on track. Niang steps back out and they miss their first three. And it's one and done. Edgem could not control the offensive rebound that time. McLemore with two loses it, turns it over. See if they can get with you away from the paint again. Edgem with an offensive rebound that time. Did not draw the foul on Young. Johnson puts it down, splits the D, and then tosses it out of bounds, and they turn it over again. Two consecutive turnovers here by the Jayhawks, who lead it by seven. Eighth turnover of the game. If there's been a bugaboo all season for Kansas, not great point guard play. Still maintain Elijah Johnson more of a two. Well, we you know, you see play the first half with a lot of whistles, and then Edgen was trying to draw a foul, and looked to me like he got pretty hammered, and there's no whistles. So, I agree. You know, you look for consistency with officials more than anything else. And I think you've got to call the game tight the first three minutes. Edgen backs it down that time with the field goal, and I always say closes back to within five. That's why I would tell my team, Brent, go inside, make those officials blow the whistle early in the half. McLemore has to give it up, cracks it back down. They've turned it over. Here comes Bam. Very sloppy with the ball to start the second half by the Jayhawks. Lucius whips it over. Flyborn misfires. They still cannot find the rain. Johnson drives in the other way and one coming to the free throw line. Now on the other end, Brent, Kevin Young got hurt. Might have been that ankle again. And he's going out. Watch him hustle for this rebound. He comes down on that ankle again. So he'll take a seat. Ellis checks back in. Babb picked up the personal foul. 
There's the trainer with him. Old fashioned three. 41 33. Eight. Up by eight. That's their biggest lead. Iowa State led by eight early in this game. Lucius runs into his own man, picks it back up, and now they've turned it over. That's an intentional foul. Intentional foul is called. Well, Mike Stewart was right on it. Corey Lucius, when he lost the ball, just grabbed that jersey, and Mike Stewart was right there. Paulo will replace him here early. Lucius is scoreless. Watch Hasn't it. hit a field goal in the first two games. You can take a look at it right yep. here. Watching trailing, reaches him, grabs him. No question about that call. Yep, good call. Mike Stewart is staring right at it. So Kevin Young, we are told, went back to the locker room. I want to tell you, Brent, you may disagree with me. I think that technical foul by on Bill Self, it may not have been totally calculated. But I think he got his message across. I don't want to say that the, it's changed the way they're officiating, but it's a different game since that point. Maybe it, maybe it inspired his team a little bit. Well, Lucius can't get on track for Iowa State, which has been a huge factor in both of these games. Clyburn picked up the slack for the Cyclones against Oklahoma, and we'll see what happens now. Here's Ellis, four of five. Johnson off to a good start, second half. I would make an effort to go inside. And he does just that. With it from the free throw line, knocks it down. Smooth move by Johnson. Good penetration. With the just filled in behind him. Now Iowa State needs to be careful. Cannot lose contact here early in the second half. Clyburn's going to try to get in on the inside as he did against Oklahoma, but he was sealed up by Relaford. Well, Dab will down. hoist another three. Niang comes back with an offensive rebound. Niang jumps about an inch high. With the on him, muscles misses. Battle rebound. Cyclones control. He ain't get a good job of walling off with him. Otto will bring it over and back. And Hoiberg is protesting that it was touched. He's looking for help on the call that it was touched by the, the Jayhawks. The defender, take a look here, Fran. Yep. Oh, Terry Oglesby say, he said he didn't see it. It looked, it looked like Elijah Johnson touched that ball, didn't it? No question. Don't get me started. Yeah, the officials were quick to make that call. Dallas flashes paint. Wow, he knows Edgem's in foul trouble with two. Went right at him. That's smart. I think both teams have to play this game from inside out right now. Niang coming through. Drives wow. for the That was a strong move by the freshman. Quickly at the other end, it's Relaford goes down. Picked up by McLemore. Now Relaford seems to be shaken up. With the misses, Edgem rebounds. Bill Self's wondering what Jeff Withy was thinking right there. A long two. Niang off the front of the iron into Withy's hands. A lot of contact both ways, both teams. A rejection, a block by Paolo. Clyburn saves it, but he tries, doubles with it. And Coach Hoiberg cannot be happy with what he's seen here in this game right now. Jim Week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. First of two semifinals, and in the next game, Oklahoma State will be playing at Kansas State in the nightcap here in Kansas City. 
That could be another tough physical game. We had 15 fouls called in the first half, and during the first five minutes of the second half, only one foul. Right. Well, it's interesting, Brent. At halftime, everybody should regroup, players, coaches, and officials. I feel the first four minutes of the second half, way too much contact both ways. They've missed a couple calls, you understand that, but in terms of the physicality of the game, cuts, banging inside, this next four minutes, very important for the three officials to get a hold of this basketball game. You saw Corey Lucius put on his sweat, so he's not returning to the game anytime soon. Over the top, no, McGee rebounds for the Cyclones. Apollo, the youngster from Ames, will run the point. McGee, shooting guard, Bab along with him, the defensive stopper. Edgem and the freshman Niang, and that's your five on the floor now for Fred Hoiberg, and he travels. Yeah, trying to sneak underneath Withy with a little up and under. John Higgins said he moved his pivot foot. Not it's much argument. It's got to be frustrating for Hoiber in this game, how things have gone. Yeah. You know, he's a guy that keeps his composure. And his team has turned it over 12 times, four of them this half now. Here's Ellis, who has played very, very well. Spark, who had those six assists off the bench. Now running the point for Coach So. He's it back to a charging with him. Good play. Little pick and roll. Tried to get it inside first. Edge drives. Nice response. You know, when you're 6'6 six, six and you've been undersized your whole career, you know how to play against bigger guys. You could perfect example right there of knowing the angle of the backboard. Ellis moves on Edgem. And he responds. The offensive leader, as far as Kansas is concerned. Well, what a jump he's made since early in the year. McDonald's All-American. McGee gets in. No whistle. Niang offensive rebound. His scoop fails. And uh, Holly, what's the report on Kevin Young? Well, he's been back in the locker room for quite a while. He came out and he's been back in this behind the scenes tunnel area doing some sprints. The uh, athletic trainer Bill Cowgill actually had him do some side to side lateral movement to make sure he could quickly move. He appears to be fine and he's joining the Jayhawks back on the bench. And they just walked in and taken a seat over there. You can see in the background, Holly. Thank you, Tharp. Goes to Johnson, and Elijah's long ball misses, but with the right man, right place. And drew the foul. Good execution by Kansas. Ran the offense down, got Johnson the shot, and this is just a good bounce right here. Kept alive by McLemore with him. No pain in that ankle when Withy responds like that. Tell you what, when Young went out, Brent, and Perry Ellis has picked up the slap. I mean, they, they have not missed a beat, and Young was the guy early in this game that got them going. Ellis is six of seven from the floor, with a total of 12 points. Now Trailer will give Withy a break here. You know, you know Ellis is a class valedictorian. And Bill Self told him two months ago, if you don't get more aggressive, I'm just not going to play you. And the guy learns quickly. Everything with the Jayhawks starts with their defense. And their defense has done an outstanding job here. Iowa State is only 4 of 20 shooting the 3. Over the top, Lucius turns it over again. Here's Tharp wisely pulling it back outside now. Here's Tharp, he'll kick it inside, drives all the way for the layup. The point guard of the future for the Jayhawks, and the point guard could be coming right now in the next few weeks.
And we'll be right back after this message from your friends at Phillips 66. The Phillips 66 Big 12 Championship, part of Championship Week, presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. And here in this half, Kansas has outscored Iowa State 20 to 8, and a very frustrated Coach Fred Hoiberg, about as emotional as you will ever see the coach. Watch. Coach Knight might say that's no way to throw it. No, I agree. I got to give that a 2.4 <laughs> on the 10 scale right there. But I understand his yeah. frustration. This. Kansas called for the foul that time, and it's going to be on Ellis. And uh, Holly, uh, what did he have to say to the team? Well, he was frustrated, as you saw, and he said, guys, we can't play this way. We've got to find a way to pull together. Remember, after their last Kansas loss, they went down and lost Oklahoma. After that game, as we see Bab miss, they had a team meeting. The players had to air their grievances. They thought there were too many personal agendas going on. Some of the seniors, Chris Babb, some of the other guys told me we had to get all the air out and come back on the same page. And it looks like that might be creeping up right now. they got to find a way to pull together. Well, Booker responds with a field goal. And the young man he really needs to take flight here is Corey Lucius. He has not scored in two games at this Big 12 championship. Number 13, a very, very important point guard. He's out here defensively now in the zone up on top. And they can obviously use Will Clyburn scoring as well, Brent. But it's zoned now by Iowa State. Trailer. And he rips it apart. Sure did, right in the middle of that zone. You don't really fool Kansas too much. They're really prepared for everything. Now it's a foul on Trailer. But the one thing that stands out about the Jayhawks is their field goal defense. Simply one of the best in the country and Bill Self has always had it that way holding the Cyclones to 41 points they're four of 20 shooting the three against this Kansas defense and we've got a timeout the Jayhawks in control as the name I suggest Phillips 66 is a proud sponsor of the Phillips 66 Big 12 men's basketball championship both start with Phillips 66 and both stand for performance. Phillips 66, experts in gas since 1927. Rebound by McLemore. Well, I can agree with you more about that half-court defense, Brent. Bill Self's never had a team that's given up over 40% from the field. Tharp loses control. Here comes Lucius with his back. Dish off. Booker gives it back, and now Lucius will bring it out. There's that defensive work again, and Babb can't respond. Now Lucius wide open with Withy jumping at him, and Lucius' first field goal in two games, and it is huge. Let's see if that gets him going a little bit. Now we mentioned Clyburn. He had the 17 yesterday that Fran told you about. He has only three today, so these are two important cards. They're both on the floor for the Cyclone. I think most impressively, they've taken the three-point away. 31 threes in the first two games the Cyclones have made. Foul is going to be called on Iowa State. Well, you got Young hurt. Ellis getting a rest. You know what's interesting about Trailer and Macklemore, Brent? Remember last year as Kansas improved after the Final Four? These two guys made so much, they made practices so much better a year ago, and they got better. Macklemore a little slower developing than, excuse me, Trailer a little slower developing. Booker, by the way, has three personal fouls right now. But it is... Edgem, who's going to take a seat, and Niang checks in. Trailer knocks down another free throw. It's 59 44. Jayhawks in control. Jeff Withy does not have a block shot tonight. Lucius gives a pick, gives it back to Niang, and here's Bad. Tried to get into Booker, they did. Double Withy is there. Stays with it. Booker comes back with the left hand and scores. That's a good effort by Anthony Booker. He gave him good minutes in Ames against the big guy. Here's 
Here's with the pick and roll, and he's on the free throw line. Niang. No, let's check that. Check it. It's a charge. It's going against Whitley. Had a little deja vu here, Brent, from the first game. Watch Niang. Outside the restricted arc. Good position. Yeah. No question about it. That's three now on Jeff Whitley. It's a foul I wouldn't really mind on Withy right there because you don't want to take away his aggressiveness. Three is okay with this much time. Dangerous pass. Wyburn picks it up. Rutherford's all over. Well, that's a foul, so you got to call that. That's, that's too much contact out here. So he hoists the three and drains it. Now Clyburn. Cuts it to 10. Self will look down the bench. He's going to bring the freshman back. Ellis is going to come back after this timeout. Fred Herbert's complaining about that contact. That was right in front of us, Brent. That's why I say both ways, you've got to make sure that you keep this game under control. Now, Relaford hasn't picked up a foul yet in this game. Very active defensively. Well, Fred, let's take a look at today's Wendy's Wooden Watch as we come to that time of the year. And there are the finalists from the Big 12. What do you make of McLemore? Marcus Smarty will see the next game and with him. Well, we saw how, how aggressive Ben McLemore was yesterday. He has not been able to get it going today, obviously. That's been his M.O. all season long. A couple great games, an off game where he's not aggressive. Marcus Smart, what can you say about him? He's been... Fabulous all year, and a big reason why Oklahoma State, to me, Brent, is a team that could get to the Elite Eight. They're that good. So Ellis is back on the floor for the Jayhawks. Lead's been trimmed to 10. They were once up by 16. He stays on the floor with the three. Kicks back now to Elijah Johnson. Here's McLemore. He'll hit the withy. Not there, but a tap by Ellis. Not good. Rebounds it again, though, and gave him a fresh shot clock set. Another great possession by Perry Ellis. What a game for the freshman. Rutherford drives through. Battle for the rebound. Relaford comes away again. Kansas plays keep away. Like hockey, they can't clear the zone, Iowa State. Withy turns baseline, can't score. And out of bounds, Iowa State was touching the ball as it went out. Edgerman is going to have to come back because he's the best rebounder on the Iowa State team, and he checks right back in now. I'll tell you who's doing a good job also bashing those boards has been this guy, the youngster from Wichita. On this possession alone, <laughs> four offensive rebounds for the Jayhawks. And you can bet they're going to utilize this clock and get a great shot. Got it down to eight minutes now with a ten-point lead. Oh, nice. It inside to Ellis. Just in time for March Madness. Iowa State not realizing Ellis was working behind the zone. Clyburn swings and twists, but there was a foul. This goes against Relaford. That's his first. Well, you can watch this young man, Ellis, now. He is 7 of 9 from the field, leading Kansas off the bench with 14 points. Right back up to this message from your friends at Phillips 66. Our sixth man of the game brought to you by Motel 6, Fran, and no question about this one. Been tremendous today. The young man from Wichita has been on Bill Self's radar since his freshman year. It's been good inside and out. The aggressiveness has come... As the year has gone on, great ball movement by Kansas versus that zone. Watch Ellis working behind, slips in, good pass by Elijah Johnson. 
And Iowa State has even struggled for the free throw line. After missing four in a row, they finally hit one. And I want to remind everybody that the attendance for today's session has set a Big 12 championship record. 19,160 here today. And they'll stick around for game two between Oklahoma State and Kansas State. And that'll be following this game. Winner, of course, advances to tomorrow afternoon's championship game. Just remember how quick Iowa State can score with those threes. Shots a low jealous again. Nothing to it. Perry Ellis. <laughs> And it's 16 points for the youngster off the bench here today. 63-51. Cliburn misfires and McLemore battles for the rebound. And hits a three at the other end. The Jayhawks smarting just a bit because the Iowa State fans thinking that they should have won the first two, had a joke that said, it's very hard to beat a team three straight times <laughs> in one season. And I think the Jayhawks took that little humor personally. Right? And, I, and I think the players did too. They understand that Iowa State's players thought they won the first two games. And I was serious when we started this game. Travis Relaford particularly said, okay, you want us a third time? You got us. Let's take a look at some potential finalists for our Capital One Cup impact performance of the week. Well, Pierre Jackson was brilliant in the second half, almost bringing Baylor back. And LeBron Nash, who's going to be a key guy in this tournament for Travis Ford, played equally as well. Not quite as well on the scoreboard, but dominated inside. So log on to CapitalOneCup.com. Vote for this week's impact performance. Niang gives him a three. That's good coaching right there. Fred Hoiberg out of those timeouts. You know, Brent, so many possessions in an NBA season. You got to run good stuff to get your best players open. Fred Hoiberg as good as anybody at that. Johnson feeds with a low. Whips it to Ellis, and the young man flushes. Jeff Withy so comfortable now with those double teams. He recognized Ellis was going to be open. Lucius feeds it behind him, and Edge is knocked down. Foul was going to be called on Elijah Johnson. You know, Perry Ellis now with a career high. The 18 points. Well, the last one you and I could have made. That's how open he was. Great pass by Jeff Whitley. Might not have been shooting it down on the No, net, that's however. true. He's got to lay it in. <laughs> <laughs> but the product of good ball movement tonight. They're doing a fabulous job, the Jayhawks are, defensively on McGee. He's two of six from the field. And he's the young man that Hoiberg counts on when you're trailing like this for some firepower. Oh, remember how easily Iowa State scored as a team in both the first two meetings. Both overtime victories by the Jayhawks. A little full court press. Relaford brings it up. And Relaford looked at the shot clock, realized he had to get it over quickly. That's a 50-year guy. And they've turned it over. So they force a five-second violation, and it'll be Cyclone basketball looking to try and cut this down to single digits, give themselves that one final run, friend, that Absolutely. you always talk about at this yep. point. Especially because they can shoot the long ball. You think about it, two threes, they're back in it. Niang puts it on the deck and scores and draws the foul. Another talented freshman oh, man. we've seen in the Big 12 next we, year. We have loved watching this guy play. Take a look. He shoots this with his right hand, but just the ability to get that ball from the perimeter off the dribble on with him, hang in the air. 
Draws that contact. Two fouls on Ellis. And look what we've got here. Now you need a stop or two if you're the Cyclones. McLemore quickly brings it across the timeline. Fans on both sides sense that this is it now at the five minute mark. Elijah kicks it with the and one. Corey Roosh has pressured the ball so hard, Elijah Johnson had no choice but to drive it. Take a look, and that brings the help with the scores at the rim. Niang picks up number three. Withy adds the free throw. That's 13 points for Jeff Withy. Yang puts it down, drives on with him, kicks it back, deflected by Relaford out of bounds. Once again, Travis Relaford in the right place. There you see the numbers last two nights. Of course, you get the conference tournament play, Brent, especially in this league where everybody's played each other twice already. You get accustomed to styles of play. Niang knocks down another three ball. Pulls him back to within nine. Well, that's all well and good, but they need some stops. And Hoiberg telling them just that. He's up now. With he on that high pick and roll stays outside. Rutherford comes around him again. Dart goes inside to Ellis. And one. Edge him. A monster performance by the young man from Wichita. This basket, Brent, is about their system. Watch him seal to the out inside. This is a great post feed right here. It's going to be to the corner of the board. Well done. A 20-point game off the bench. I remember Kevin Young nursing that injury. He has not reported back in. Yeah. Ellis has certainly picked up the slack and some, and here's McGee now. Fires a three, and he makes it. That's what the young man can do. Now again, Iowa State starting to heat up, but none of this matters if they can't get some defensive stops. Start on the floor. Lamore bounces off Niang and scores. Lucius will put it on the deck. Lob. And it'll go back to the Kansas Jayhawks. So a spirited rally by Iowa State, but as Fran pointed out, can't gain much ground if you can't stop him at the other end. Time out. Tonight's Big 12 Network game has been brought to you by Phillips 66, experts in gas since 1927. By Dick's Sporting Goods, every season starts at Dick's. By Vonage, sounds good. By Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. And by Red's Apple Ale, branch out. So, Fran, let's take a look at our quick stats brought to you by the Pita Inns and Sweets. Well, I think the three-point shooting. Remember, first two games, Iowa State made 31 threes. They shot over 50%. Kansas has been ready today. They've stretched that defense out to the three-point line, and they've basically bottled up that Cyclone perimeter game. 76-65 with 3.43 left in regulation. Kansas always a good clock team in these situations. 
Johnson keeps it, gives Whitby charging in again, and a blocking foul is going to be called. It's on Niang, who's down. That's number four. Elijah Johnson did a really good job. That perimeter game, they moved the ball side to side. Recognizing the clock goes low, he gets into the lane, makes the play for the big fella. Tyrus McGee, incidentally, with two three-point field goals here today, has gone past a former legend who played at Iowa State, his coach. That's why right, Freddie Hoiberg had 89 back in 1995. And with the two today, McGee now has 90 this season. What's that former legend stuff? <laughs> <laughs> He's still a legend. <laughs> oh, but you lose, maybe lose one game, you're not a legend anymore? No, no, no more. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? You're not in business work. Oh, yeah. Hey, how about this? They're going to be hard to guard in the NCAA tournament. There's no question. Oh, because you don't see this style the way they play. Edgem jumps out, knocks the ball out of bounds, and Self has to quickly step away. Will Self's a little calmer than he was midway through the first half. Yes, he was. <laughs> I wonder if that one Iowa State fan will be looking for him again after this game. <laughs> and on the uh, reception, the foul's going to be called. Is that edge him again? Yes, it is. Well, Lou Garrick, I mean, Perry Ellis is going to go to the line because Kevin Young may be Wally Pitt. Indeed. The guy that was the first baseman for the Yankees missed the game one day, right? What, 21? Absolutely. 2100 plus. Ellis's future looks bright indeed. But let's give Kevin Young some credit because when they were struggling early in this game, fell down by about a half dozen points. It was Kevin Young who kept them in the middle of his activity. No, no question. The power forward spot today for Kansas has been outstanding. No doubt about it. And it's hard to defend Kansas with Withy and the power forwards operating like they have today. Because you've got two very effective big men. Niang rattles out, and McGee underneath turns it over. So it will be Jayhawk basketball in control. Last year, Bill Self did not play in the Big 12 championship game. Eliminated by Baylor in the semifinal. Missouri, of course, won that championship. But if they hold on here, they'll go to tomorrow's title game against the winner of the Kansas State-Oklahoma State game. Jayhawks swept Kansas State this year, but they split two games with Oklahoma State. Lost a tough one in Lawrence. McLemore tracks it down. We're down in two and a half minutes. I think there'll be motivation for the Jayhawks with both opponents sharing that Big 12 title with the Wildcats. Elijah, 82-65. And Withy tracks it down, stolen underneath, and Withy commits a personal foul on Edger. Two minutes, we're advancing to the Big 12 championship game. Time now, friend, for our interstate batteries drive of the game. Roger Johnson feeling the pressure from Corey Lucius. Got to the rim, got the big fella. An easy basket inside. Elijah Johnson, who was so good at the end of last season, into the final four run for the Jayhawks. And remember, Brent, we saw him get 20, uh, 39 at Ames. Followed that up the next two games with 22 assists. Full-court press, and it'll be Johnson who will bring it up. Rutherford helps. You know, I never meant that as a slam to Elijah Johnson, but he's not a pure point guard. I've always thought of him more as a scorer, but he's had to become one with this team. Stolen. Lucius. 82-69, 143 to go. Pressure the rest of the way. 
Tap to McLemore, wide open with the and he turned it over. Too far in front of him. And Bill Self quickly checked that clock to see what the score was on that <laughs> turnover. He knows that a three here can pull him back to within 10 with a minute and a half. Strange things can happen in a basketball game. And right now, Self wants a timeout. That's just a freshman mistake. He's got a couple freshmen on the floor right now. And the other thing about the Jayhawks, should they win the Big 12 championship tomorrow, and still there's a long way to go, remember this. They could wind up with a one seed. They're sitting solidly with a two seed right now, according to Joey Brackett's our friend Joe Lenardi. And there are his one seed, Duke, Indiana, Gonzaga, and Louisville. Now, Duke was upset by Maryland today. So that becomes a shaky one over there with the Jayhawks on this side, Georgetown, Kansas, Miami, and Ohio State. So stay tuned. And Georgetown beaten by Syracuse. So the Jayhawks put themselves in pretty good shape here this afternoon. And not only the seed important, but they're going to be able to drive back here to Kansas City next week. McGee fires deep three. Was it there? McLemore went after that rebound after turning the ball over. And Elijah's going to come up to the free throw line. Lucius fouls him. I think, Brent, that Kansas State will also be here next week, but in, as part of a different pod. Exactly. Yeah. Be in a different region. Absolutely. Different region, but remember the way the pod system works. You can have two different regions. The NCAA is going to be very impressed by this number, 19,160. Yes, That's the crowd here today in this arena and both the Jayhawks and the Wildcats scoring so they can have a big crowd those two are in different pods coming in here which means they will not play each other again but they could draw their faithful and this has just been a huge enthusiastic crowd in fact both of the previous days I thought the crowd absolutely tremendous. You know, it reminds me of the old Big Eight. You know, you, the way the Iowa State fans have been able to drive down I-35, Kansas and Kansas State, both very good. Makes you think of guys like uh, Johnny Orr and, you know, Norm Stewart when he was at Mizzou and Jack Hartman, Ron Kruger, Ted Owens, Larry Brown. McGee flashes again, misfiring in the battle for the rebound, and it was bad. Takes it out. Niang will go to the corner and Lucius is short. Now final minute. Jayhawks cleaning it up now. Running down some time and they'll be back on a free throw line with Belford. Now, for those of you wondering about Iowa State, they're going to go on. They're going to move on to the NCAA tournament under Coach Fred Hoiberg. And whoever draws them, beware. This is not an easy team to get ready for. I know they haven't played their best game here today, but they were matched against a team that had a little something to prove against them. Still smarting from the fact that people said, oh, you should have lost those two games. No, I agree. I agree. And remember, the way they shoot the three and spread you out, it's hard to simulate that as you get ready for them. Kansas has played them three times. They know their style. And they're like a home run hitter, Brent. When they make threes, they can beat anybody. Of course, a year ago at this time, I was saying, beware Missouri. You know, yeah, yeah. how'd that work out, folks? <laughs> I'm still sorry about that, that I blew up all those brackets. Uh, well, you know, Kyle O'Quinn at Norfolk State on St. Patrick's Day, come on. <laughs> You're exactly right. Huh? How can you beat him on that day? There's McGee, strong offensive player, just a nice basketball player, actually. But uh, he, uh, he gives up the six-man mantle today to a young Perry Ellis of the Jayhawks because he certainly led this team Still on the bench in cleanup time here with the final 30 seconds. And Kansas will head on to the Big 12 championship game again. Well, Freddie Hoiberg's done a great coaching job. I'll bet you that Johnson does not take it in and slam yeah. it this time. <laughs> but they have to shoot it. So it'll be Thug. He'll score. Johnson was out at the midcourt line. He wanted no part of that. 88-71. <laughs> Lucius underneath edge of man. McLemore goaltending. 
So score that field goal for Edger. Yeah, Hoiberg and the Iowa State coaches go down, shake hands. And Bill Self returns to the championship game. I believe Fran has three times in the last four years, missing only last year in my, my memory search. Not, not a big surprise when you see the Jayhawks back here in the championship game. And remember them come bracket time, folks. This is one of the better teams in the country. Especially with Perry Ellis. Remarkable, remarkable job, Fran, that he did here today in this game with 23. Absolutely. And we watched the maturation, Brent, all season long of Perry Ellis, the way he stepped up. Take a look as he fills into an open area. And he gave them some offense that Kevin Young normally doesn't. And Kevin Young outstanding today, but Perry Ellis with a career game coming at a perfect time. Pass to Withy, watch the double team, and he's going to slip to the rim. And he really, really was impressive today. No surprise who our Geico player of this game was. 10 of 12 from the field, taken away Holly Rowe. Well, Perry Ellis, when Kevin went down with that ankle injury and was out for a while, what was going through your head about how to contribute? Um, I mean, I've done it a couple games before. Um, he got in foul trouble a couple games. Um, I just try to come in and just attack, just attack a team. And I just try to do what the coaches tell me, just attack the goal. You told me earlier year this has been a tough mental process changing to this college level game what makes you feel like you've got it now um i would say it started in practice uh winter break i really try to play it my hardest in practice and just try to do, go from there and i started picking up every game i became more comfortable and more comfortable so it just kept picking up thanks so much it was picking up tonight all right thank you we said brent thanks holly and once again our final score kansas 88 iowa state 70 through 73 and so the Jayhawks move on to tomorrow afternoon's championship game. It'll be 5 o'clock Kansas City time, 6 o'clock for you fans in the East. Big Saturday. And coming up in 30 minutes, Oklahoma State and Kansas State. But first, we're going to send you to Doug Bell and Brendan Manser with the Principal Financial Big Club Championship Update right after this break.